Busybius runs a quantitative impact study every six months to monitor the impact of the Basel III framework on banks and to determine the effect of the proposed revisions to the framework on capital requirements. The most recent report was published in Feb of 2022 based on 2021 data. The results show a 55% increase in market risk capital requirements versus Basel 2.5 with the adoption of FRTB. Implementation of FRTB in the United States presents unique and difficult challenges because US regulators have already adopted a separate capital charge expertly designed to capture tail risk. The global market shock, a component of the dot franc Act stress test. For specific understanding of the capital impact of FRTB, Bank Policy Institution has conducted a study with six U.S. banks and presented the findings in the bar chart. The banks considered are Bank of America, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan, Capital One, GS and MS. In the chart, the purple block of 57 billion is GMS add-on. Now, let us see what is the market risk capital charge. Under Basel 2.5, it is 43 billion. FRTB with IMA would be 66 billion. And FRTB with STD will be 81 billion. If we add the GMS to these three scenarios, it will be 100, 123, and 138 billion, respectively. The aggregate capital requirements for market risk for the six trading banks would increase from 100 billion to 123 billion with IMA and to 138 billion without IMA. The existing framework already requires overcapitalization for market risk. Overall, what I can say is under the FRTB regime, the capital requirement is going to increase significantly. BCBS publishes the progress report on adoption of the Basel regulatory framework every six months. However, it is overdue since more than a year. This was based on the report published in October of 2021. Let me quickly explain the color coding and the number. Number one is no draft guidelines. Number two, draft guidelines are published. Number three, final guidelines are published. Number four, final rule is in force. Number five, green, adoption is completed. Number six, yellow, in progress. Number seven, red, breach the timelines. Let us focus on FRTB adoption. Highlighted in the red box, except couple of jurisdictions like Canada, Singapore, Japan, no jurisdiction has issued the draft guidelines as they are still in consultation. EU has partially implemented the FRTB guidelines and all other jurisdictions are getting up to issue guidelines. So we can expect more activity in the space very soon. What does the introduction of FRTB actually mean for financial institutions and what are the main challenges faced by those seeking to implement it? There are four things specifically, structure and cost of business, data, governance and controls, and technology. Let me start with structure and cost of business. Product with non-modelable risk and exotic products attracts more capital. So unless there is a strong business case, banks can't support these products. Real-time disk monitoring, banks struggle to satisfy the need for a real-time disk monitoring. They need to put in place refined policies and procedures to achieve this. Coming to data, FRTB puts more emphasis on the data sourcing and its quality. So banks need to source sensitivities, market, and reference data. Under IMA, data for risk factors pertaining to complex embedded instrument will be scarce and getting real quotes will be challenging in rendering the risk factors as non-modelable. Risk and market data must be aligned between front and back office to ensure qualification under profit and loss attribution test. Therefore, huge volumes of data across asset classes have to be migrated from front to back office. For revised SA, 
front office already has most of the sensitivities and therefore must be sourced into risk system for capital calculation. Complying with BCBS 239 is going to be more challenging under FRTV regime. Coming to governance and controls, deviation from trading and banking book allocation rules needs substantial reasoning and regulatory approval. Policies and procedures governing the moment of positions will play a vital role in adhering to regulatory mandate. Eligibility tests for IMA qualification will involve maintenance of models across desks and asset classes, assessments, approval of result, data lineage, and reporting capabilities. Lastly, technology. One way of dealing with these data challenges is to improve the use of technology. Implementing common data hierarchies on big data infrastructure such as Hadoop, HD Insight, or NoSQL can significantly help manage your data. Still, there are considerable challenges associated with migrating data and computations. All these need to be addressed in a structured manner that provides a framework for good, compliant data management in the future. Hope this helps you all and thank you very much for listening.